What's going on? Welcome to another video. In case you guys are new here, my name is Rory. Today's video, I'm going to be taking you guys along for the preparation before my super long training session tomorrow. Typically on Saturdays, I'll do a really long cardio session, whether it be running or riding my road bike. About to head to the gym right now and get a workout with Levi since it's finals week and I don't have to go to class this morning. We'll finally actually get to be able to get a workout in together since quarter's about to end for both of us at our schools. What about that? What'd you say? You said that needs to heal up for tomorrow right there. Oh, bunions. You got bunions. The dress shoe cut. Oh. You guys are probably wondering what I meant earlier in the video by training session. Tomorrow, I decided that I'm gonna run a marathon with absolutely zero preparation. I'm not going for pace or anything like that, just trying to do the distance and it's gonna be a self-sustained marathon. So if I need to take like a five or 10 minute break at any point to grab a Gatorade or get fuel just to keep going while I'm running, aside from the goos and stuff like that I'll have with me, I'm gonna do so and then I'll continue the marathon on from there. I actually have a buddy who's going to be running with me and then Levi is going to be finishing the run. He's just getting over a cold so he's going to do part of his marathon prep run towards the end of my run tomorrow. One of the main reasons why I'm deciding to do this with absolutely zero preparation is because if you guys follow Levi on social media, you know that he just started his marathon prep and him and I have been talking about doing the marathon together uh, before I actually go and commit to the marathon and start doing the prep. I wanted to do one on my own just to get it out of the way and get my mind not worried about the distance, not that I am. I just wanted to go and actually get it done. That way when I can start the prep for uh, that marathon. Something that doesn't even seem like necessarily a challenge. It's just more so focusing on the pace and getting my aerobic level up to the pace that I want to actually run the competition day marathon at. And one of the big things that was just hindering me in being able to do it or not is just scheduling and availability of the race comparatively to some of the other uh, events that I have going on in April. As most of you guys know on my Instagram, I've been posting a lot more dirt bike stuff lately and that's because I have a few motocross seasons and a off-road, half motocross, half off-road style racing series that I'm participating in this year and those have races all throughout April and with some conflicting times and I need to put time towards prep for both that and I'm going to need to put time to prep for marathon as well. One of the benefits to doing this though is that the marathon prep and just getting my aerobic level to a higher level will only benefit me on the bike with motocross because that's something in the past that I've neglected and been more strength focused and so that just increases arm pump on the bike and it reduces my stamina or how long I can actually ride or race at a race pace during a moto just because I'm a lot bulkier and when I'm doing a ton of strength lifting I'm usually like 240 pounds. Right now I'm sitting around 228 pounds and I've been doing a semi-decent amount of running volume, not a ton. Uh, a few weeks back I was doing 15 miles per week but this entire week I haven't gotten to do any of my pacing runs just because we had a pretty big meeting for one of our final exam presentations for one class and I had dress shoes on and it also was my busiest class of the entire week so I was walking all over campus did like 15,000 steps and got some pretty good sized blisters going so I'm trying to let those recover just for tomorrow not that I've not pushed with blisters before and they're really not bad to things I've had in the past but I just don't want to deal with that going into a marathon when I haven't prepped. So yeah, today is the day before the event. So it's all about continuing the hydration that I've already started, eating good meals, getting a ton of fruit in, stretching, and just making sure I'm ready to go for tomorrow. So we're gonna stop at REI right now, pick up some goos, 
pick up some stinger bar type things, and then go throughout the rest of the day for the prep, and I'll take you guys through the run tomorrow. Let's do it. Just cooked up some food real quick. Got a full avocado in there. Ground turkey, it's 93.7, and then two cups of white rice in the bottom. I'm gonna smash this, and then we're gonna shoot some stuff for Elevate. Just got some new samples, so I'm waiting for stuff to finish uh, wrinkle releasing right now, so we can do a quick little reel edit for the samples, and then gonna hit the road to start getting the stuff ready for the marathon. Just finished shooting that sample edit. Just super quick little behind the scenes sneak peek of the two different colorways that we have with the sample joggers that came in. They're just our minimum viable product that we got for the joggers so far and we're gonna do a bunch of modifications to actually get them to launch day in a few weeks, hopefully, weeks to a month. It's something we've been working on for a while, and if you guys know how the Sentinel shorts went with me, I'm extremely picky with the products that I actually wanna launch because you're only gonna make an impression once, and I wanna make sure that I drop the best quality product that I can possibly do with the money that we currently have for Elevate. So I'd rather do quality over quantity. Um, especially when it is attributed to your brand's reputation and name. So that's what we're going for with these. Like we say with all of our products, we're trying to maximize and create the ultimate mix of form, fit, and function. So you guys saw in the little video that I'll put right here. It's got the two samples in for our Sentinel joggers that you guys are gonna help us develop. So first we're looking at the black sample that we got and it has the no flap for the cargo pocket here. We're either gonna do a YKK waterproof zipper or a minimalist invisible zipper if we keep the cargo pocket on this variation. Down at the ankle, both pants are gonna have a four-way stretch material with a cinch ankle. And then for the upper pockets on this variation, it just has a standard pocket with no zip. For the waistband and the drawstring, on this variation, we decided to do drawstring on the inside of the waistband. And then on the other side, we decided to do with an outside the waistband drawstring for these. And then for the upper pocket, we decided to go with a hidden zipper here. It's gonna be a waterproof YKK, or again, the invisible style zipper that we mentioned before for the cargo pocket. Down here for the cargo pocket, we went with a flap option for this style, and it's gonna have a magnetic uh, seal here, um, or no cargo pocket at all. So let us know what you think down there. And then again, same cinch for the ankle. This is the greenish gray colorway that we're going to be dropping in addition to the black that you previously saw. The third colorway that we're looking to drop potentially is a pure gray. Uh, so let me know what colors you guys think we should drop, what you guys think of these two options and the variations and what changes we should make because you guys are going to help us develop these. Being able to utilize our products, whether it be for activewear or streetwear, is the main goal with everything that we look to design or create. And so that's something we're trying to do with these streetwear joggers that can double suit as activewear. How to be able to be worn like you saw with a button up and just a casual t-shirt or throw on an activewear t-shirt and then you can go run or hit a lift, whatever you wanna do. So that's what we're looking to do and excited to get your guys' feedback on these as we make them with colorways design options, where to put branding and that kind of thing. Now that I got that out of the way and just smashed all that food, I'm pretty full right now. Half a pound of ground turkey, two cups of rice and a whole avocado. Did me a little bit dirty, but it's all good. We're gonna head over to a local coffee shop, start doing some studying for my finals, some stuff for Elevate, and then a photo shoot we have coming up. And then we're gonna continue prepping on for this marathon. So let's go. Just got done studying for a while. Levi ended up stopping by and doing some stuff and going over some shoot stuff for an upcoming shoot that we're planning for both Kill Built and Elevate. Gonna cook up some dinner right now, just the rest of the ground turkey that I made earlier with some spaghetti and some other stuff like that, just to get some carbs in and fuel up before the run tomorrow. I've been fueling in advance, obviously just eating food just the night before doesn't really do a ton for you. Same with hydration. There, and just thinks just hydrating a ton the day before is going to do stuff for you. But really, you need to be hydrating two, three days before to actually see the effects of the hydration. And so, yeah, going to cook up the spaghetti with ground turkey and some vegetables and stuff, and then get cracking on some stretching and picking up stuff for my run tomorrow. Just picked up the essentials for the run tomorrow. I've got the Scratch Labs hydration mix. I've used that stuff before. It's really good for intra workout. Obviously, Pedialyte is the go to for hydrating before. 
Goos are necessary evil for long endurance events like this. Strawberry banana is one of my favorite flavors. They have other ones that are like chocolate or other flavors. And honestly, Goos, there's a strategy to actually using them. You gotta just do super tiny little bits of it. Otherwise, the it's in the name Goo. It literally will clog your airways so you can't breathe while you're running, but you need that fuel, that sodium, and the just amino acids as you're running because you're going to be depleted from almost 2,000 calories burned probably or more by the time the marathon's done. So this I'll have because Safeway was out of Stinger bars and I didn't want to buy a full $22 box at the nutrition store I went to. So I'll probably just carry one of these. It's a super light bar, uh, not really heavy on the stomach or anything like that. So that's it for securing the goods for tonight. Now I'm just gonna smash my dinner, the spaghetti that I made before, start sipping on that Pedialyte, do some stuff for my entrepreneurship class to wrap that up and then be done with it for the quarter. And then we're gonna chill out and get ready for tomorrow. Good morning. It's the morning of the run right now, about eight o'clock. I was up till like 10, 20-ish, maybe a little bit before, just because we had to submit our final paper uh, business plan for our entrepreneurship class and just proofread it and get it ready to go. Yeah, so the second I was done that, I passed out within like a minute. Yeah, so I ended up sleeping in till like 7.15 this morning, just so I was rested because we're not starting the run till 9.30. Just made up some eggs, uh, toast, and then I'm going to start sipping on some Scratch Labs hydration that I showed you guys yesterday. Usually that's a intra-workout drink that you can take during your run or put in like a camel back and just do a smaller dosage than the full scoop or whatever you want to do depending on the flavoring. Some people don't like drinking elect like flavored drinks while they're doing intense cardio workouts just because it can sometimes give you a sore throat or the taste just doesn't really work well for you personally. I don't really like it. I usually like pure water. Obviously you need to recoup the sodium and everything else that you're losing throughout your run. So I'm going to just dose it down a little bit because I'm also going to have my goos and stuff to compensate for that as well. So, but pure water really does not do you any justice when you're on the run because you're not going to get any of the nutrients that you're sweating out and it's not going to give you the sodium that you need to actually retain the water that you're losing through sweat. Yeah, leave here around nine at the latest. That way I can get over to our starting point for the run and then I'm meeting Toby there. So I want to get stretched out and warmed up over there before we kick things off. That way I'm not running behind. I just have to quickly get together and then go. Overall, the route's going to be pretty simple. It's going to be a 13.1 down and then 13.1 back on the same path but there's definitely some parts where it's going to be pretty freaking hilly so yeah it'll be all good the hills are mostly at the very beginning and the very end and the rest is going to be flat or at least a very low percentage grade incline or decline on the way down or up for the majority of the middle sections on my way to start warming up right now and meet up with toby get this thing going ready to get it going just get it started it's i'm at the point now just like i talked about in one of the previous videos about the ice bath and stuff where like i've already done this before and have done lots of events like this where they're strenuous and taxing and you might not have the preparation going into it or whatever and that's the point of it is to just try you physically and mentally and I know 100% that I can do it. It's not that, it's just going and doing it and just not being a bitch. So um, that's the whole reason I even wanted to do this, like I mentioned before in the video, is just getting out there and doing it. So later on, the prep for the actual event and everything like that seems like nothing because I already went and did it. So now I just have to do the stuff in between to drop the pace. It'll be good. Toby, I don't think he's ever done a full marathon and he's just getting being off sick so when he said he was gonna join me for the full distance i was a little surprised but he's done a few uh half ironmans and i think half marathons as well so he'll be fine he's in better running shape than i am right now because he's been logging a ton of miles so yeah i think i'm gonna start with this like nike dry fit long sleeve with no t-shirt on underneath and then I'm gonna have a t-shirt packed in my bag and then I'll just do a hot swap. Normally on an actual marathon, I wouldn't have all this extra crap and I wouldn't run with a camelback, but that's because they have stations set up with hydration and everything like that ready to go for you. Since we're doing a self-sustained marathon, we're not gonna have people with orange slices and Gatorades and all that stuff for us. So we gotta bring our own stuff, which is fine. It just makes our pack a little bit 
heavier, but that's why I'm gonna bring in the extra shirt as well. So if I start overheating in the long sleeve or just don't want the long sleeve on anymore, I can throw a clean dry shirt on and continue out the run like that. And then for bottoms, I'm wearing, you'll see get, when I get there and start warming up, I'm wearing our gray and black Sentinel Performance shorts. I run a size large for my runs and stuff. I like to size down one size just so I get the perfect fit with the liner for the run. And these things are money, super, super, super comfy. And I've done a ton of running and road biking in them. And honestly, they're hands down, not from a non-biased opinion, the reviews speak for themselves. They're one of my favorite training shorts that I have. My other favorite piece of training equipment that I'm gonna be running as well is the Strideline Crew Sock. I just discovered those around Christmas time when I got them as a gift and they are my favorite socks for training. They're so much easier to put on than the Nike Elite Crew Socks and they're so much comfier as well. They wick sweat really, really, really well and have perfect padding. So I'm stoked to use these on the run and I'm fully confident I'm gonna have no issues with my feet whatsoever, especially since I do have a small, annoying little blister that I got a Band-Aid over on my left heel already going into this. Not that that's going to be a big deal or anything, but just socks are huge when you're doing marathons or long distance events like this. So. And then for the shoes, I'm rocking the Sockney Endorphin Pro 2s that Levi and I both got a few months back. At first, I wasn't sure how I felt about them because they didn't align with the way that I run but now I've been transitioning more to a toe pure strike and it works really well and the carbon mid plate that we didn't realize how it actually functioned helps out a ton to get spring off of your steps so stoked to put those to work for this and see how they do over the course of a long distance event for me obviously they do well for everyone else Ready? About to get going. Good. Barely warmed up, but let's do it. Oh. I'm going off of my legs and my body feel. That's it. My knees and shit hurt. Plenty of time to make up pace, especially because this is a training run. I'd rather start slow and then ease into it during the run. Mile one, 908. I shut it off after doing each 10 second little clip. Is it gonna make it? But, 932, just finished mile two. Three miles, 925, four miles, 10 minutes flat, recovery run. Just did all the elevation for the run for the first half, so it'll be easy. Mile five, 936, 21.2 to go. Mile six, 9.50. Just had all our incline done now. Like I said, last mile, but there's a little bit more. Well, now it's gonna be smooth. So we get to point five. Seven miles, 9.30-ish. Eleven oh six mileage. Just hit like a 10.30 pace. 17 miles, almost. Got a point five. Straight uphill. Starting to hurt. That's what we wanted to do this for. Getting close to 18 miles. About halfway on my watch. Toby's probably already there. Have about four miles pure incline until we level out and turn back to the bridge for a little down, a little up. Let's get it. Hydrated a ton last night, like you guys saw in the video. But for whatever reason, I just hit a wall big time at 17.77 miles. I've been taking bathroom breaks to piss along the way. Even though I drank a gallon and a half of water both previous three days and slammed Pedialyte and electrolytes yesterday. My legs are literally like, you can see it how I'm walking. <laughs> right now, just within 30 seconds, turned into stiff bricks. So nutrition and hydration is key. I'm gonna walk for like 10 seconds, slam this goo right here, and then we'll get back to it. Just past mile 19, almost to mile 19 and a quarter. We're running the, the fastest pace of the whole fucking marathon now. So whenever you feel like you're cramping, you're gonna give out, can't finish. Take the 10 seconds you need. Stop being a 
try hard. Because all you're going to do is blow up and straggle up a hill at a 12 minute pace versus being smart, taking 10 seconds to actually fuel and let your body flush the lactic acid and you'll actually push harder. I'm holding 9.10, 9.15, fastest pace the whole fucking run, no problem at all. Just hit 20.25, still hitting some of my best miles yet because I'm using effective strategies where I run so I can't run anymore. Walk for 20, 10 to 20 seconds, then keep running. 22 miles and a quarter. I'm home stretch, baby. Enjoys the pirate leg. Usually, a second it starts to blow up, it goes away after like 10 seconds, and then I can keep pushing. So, start running in a sec. Back to the bridge. Alma. Twenty-three miles. All right, mile twenty-five. Don't know the pace. We got the max attack here to help bring it home. I ran out of water like seven miles ago, or cramping like a mother. But we're gonna push till the mother come in. Home stretch, baby. Don't be a bitch. Almost twenty-six miles. Cramping like a mother. Levi showed up, so it's to pick me up to keep pushing. Just finished the marathon up. By the time we got back to where my truck started, me and Toby's watches were a little bit off. We were like 0.4 miles off uh, from each other, so he only had to go another 0.2 once we got back here, or we were 0.2 off, and then I had to go 0.4. So thankfully, Levi was here to keep me trucking, and we did this weird little snake path around before we finally finished up. I'm. Um, I ended up finishing four hours 38 minutes toby did just under four hours and 30 minutes like i said before we started pace didn't matter the only rule was there are no rules and just to fucking do it because neither he's never done past 14 miles and my furthest run in like the last four to six months has been a 9.8 uh, mile run that levi and i did the other day or a few weeks ago <laughs> Levi literally hauled ass I to did. catch me. I was running at like a 620 for a while and then I blew up to an eight because that, that bridge sucks. The narrow, like it doesn't look bad, but when you're on it, it's bad. And then I came down just kind of crashing at like, not crashing, but just speeding up to like a 620, caught him at like a 635. And then just trucked along with him until he finished the finish and did the did. Overall, it wasn't too bad mentally and physically. I felt fine other than just blowing up from dehydration. So proper nutrition, dehydration, or hydration going into it will prevent that. And I thought I had a pretty good plan going into it, but obviously I know where my shortcomings are now. Also, I just haven't been training consistently due to school and stuff like that. But it's good to challenge yourself and push yourself when you guys haven't done stuff like this just to see where you're at mentally and expand what you can actually do and that's the whole purpose of our motto for elevate find the line a line was found today i know where i need to improve and we're just going to keep on trucking so it's three o'clock now we're going to go get some food and then i'm going to bring levi back and that's going to do it for this video i'll probably do a close out once i get home and do a little bit of recovery but we'll see ya